Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Omega Strikers Amateur Series. We're here, week number five, about to get underway. And actually, a couple of teams already are underway. But nonetheless, we're here, and we have matches all throughout the night. It's going to be an interesting one. Four rounds of Swiss into the bracket stage. Or into the bracket stage, which is going to be at the Invitational later, of course. That's what I meant. I'm Squid, joined now by Fem Bison. Welcome into the booth. It's, uh, it's... It's a pretty great night for Omega Strikers. I already had a little bit of fun earlier on Vaudeville's Twin Drive Thursday, but I'm glad to be here now. For sure. Um, we're going to be having a pretty interesting uh, week five today, especially because we're going to be joined by a guest due to reaching our donation goal for Fire Up, uh, donating to the Trevor Project and LGBTQ Plus charity. We're going to have the uh, Kuyachi herself cast game one of OSAS. Now we are. We're very excited to bring Kiyachi into the booth. So, I mean, realistically, without further ado, Kiyachi, yeah. welcome to the stream. It's great <laughs> to have you in the booth. Finally, the people get what they want. <laughs> it's absolutely just splendid to have you here. How are you feeling? Uh, pretty nervous. Uh, I've never casted before, for real. Um, I've only f ever filled in if. Yeah, I've only ever filled in, basically. It's... This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> it, it, it sure will be interesting. I'm sure I'm sure the people will love it. <laughs> it's Like I said, it's, it's great to have you on, and I'm very much looking forward here uh, to match one. And, and speaking on that note, like I said, it's Swiss round one. We have Don't Mind If I Do Boo facing off against the Doobers, which, you know, I have to say. As far as name goes, <laughs> uh, as names go, I mean, the teams have always been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I know that you've, you've helped out with organizing uh, the tournament as well. Uh, I mean, talking even on that note as we get into the match here, uh, you know, there's so many teams uh, that have been participating in not only the uh, NASL, but the Omega Strikers Amateur Series. I, I mean, how does it feel for you as a TO coming into this right now? Um, it feels pretty good. Um, yeah. I'm pleasantly surprised that so many people are still interested in this game and yeah. learning how to play it better. Um, and win more. Load in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, um, is it's gonna be best of ones. We have night market up. Um, and t tell us a little bit, yeah, you know, you, you, you haven't had too many opportunities to, to do some commentary. I'm sure the people will love you. Um, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. they already do, obviously, uh, otherwise they wouldn't have, uh, <laughs> they wouldn't be here in such full force, but, uh, I don't know, how, how you feel about this one? We got Juliet and Zentaro band here on Night Market. Night Market, um, Juliet and Zentaro, Zentaro band pretty much across the board, I feel like. That, that's probably something we'll see for every game. I think it's been revealed that Centaur is really strong in this patch. Um yeah. and not to mention what was were the new were the new uh trainings that were introduced to them this time? Or uh, we rotated in? Yeah, well I think it was it was Prize Fighter, Stagger Swagger, Perfect mm -hmm. Form, and One Two Punch are in punch. in place of all of the sparks. So it's been a little bit of an interesting change, you know, I, I think the KO meta has become a little bit uh, probably a little bit more prominent here in this patch as we get underway and Built we do uh, oh, we man. do have I, I believe doobers are in on the left hand side uh for yep. our observer and, and that that is the same for me awesome that's great I, i'm 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 chuffed by that i am <coughs> see how things right. play out Sorry, uh, I'm looking at look at the opening awakenings as well it looks like we have Built different for all players except for Sharks and see on that Estelle with Deadeye. I mean, that's gonna that's gonna be a lot for for the brawling uh, here. We do have a we have, we have an X and a Rasmus on the field as well as a Vice and a Dubu. I, I mean, there's gonna be a whole lot of of uh, brawling I imagine going on this game. Mm -hmm. Two siphoning ones too, so that those health bars are gonna go down really quick. Um, it's pretty good choice for X to take uh, Van Brace here. Um, yeah, I can just imagine he'll get poked out otherwise. We'll see how things go on for them. X, of course, with loads of potential to scale up 
as the game goes on, unfortunately. Uh, they're not going to get much of a chance here in set number one, or at least volley number one of set number one. So we do find ourselves all the way into OT. Don't mind if I do, but finally finding one shield bear on the opposite side. They're looking, trying to make it two here. Izzy Boy with Sharks pushing off field, and they will make it two indeed. Goal now open on the other side, but Danny Penguin can't defend the shield bear on the back. Oh, <laughs> Satiric, the death touch in OT all the way across the map. That's some quality vision, you got to admit. Yeah, we talked about versatility Erasmus, uh, but that seems like it's on another level. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen some similar goals from like Finneys who are experienced like midfielder. So they just fling it backwards and catch it on us way up backwards. Not oh, catch it, catch it coming, uh, and score off of that. This misdirection is basically like budget Rasmus. I feel like that's what a lot of people are probably calling it uh, on, on on first. Uh, I was like glance. But oh my goodness! Supernova dealing a lot of damage. Both Satiric and Twisty uh, in a bit of a rough spot right about now. That build difference certainly coming in. <laughs> Twisty will find that KO as well, and Izzy shown off the top. Mm -hmm. Um, I think. I think Dubu will find some pretty good success if they. Basically, just go for the KO, because uh, they're they're going to get outcore control, having like two melee, uh, two melee forwards against the double midfielder, especially on this map. Well, they are having uh, some difficulties right about now. Uh, it's one goal the other way, uh, presently. So it is the Dubers. They just lose two of their shield bearers, though. So it's not exactly looking amazing for them, but they do have a little bit of control moving down towards the other side. And playing a little bit of a game of ping pong here, Estelle on the bottom, along with that tofu wall, it's going to complicate things. A bit of a pinball. So we get well into OT right about now. Twisty and Satiric both trying to find uh, some sort of way to move forward in this one, but there's a lot of dunk potential between the Estelle and the Vice. Death Touch comes out. It's almost enough to get that one towards the net, but not quite a beautiful piercing shot. Sharks takes the first one here for Don't Mind If I Do. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, this that's that's what I mean about uh, Twisty's X just getting poked out. Um, he's definitely want to get some uh, stagger awakenings during draft, if they'll leave him available for it. I mean, yeah, first pick would be quite helpful. Uh, I do wonder mm -hmm. if if we we'll, if we'll see stagger swagger uh, become a selection here. Is uh, Sharks actually almost becoming a victim of their own uh, teammates' tofu wall? There, almost got stuck in there uh, in close close proximity with an X. Pretty much the last place that you want to be at any time, especially close to a wall. They will pick up one, almost two shield bears, but Carly a fairly solid job here on the defensive end, getting that one away through the middle even. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I actually saw a, an accidental death touch from Rasmus. Incredibly valuable asset. You don't want to have it on cooldown, although it, uh, I think, somewhat famously, you know, is a... Uh, what the ultimate in the game that that is on a bit of a shorter cooldown than some of the others, you know, especially in comparison to like Supernova uh, up there in the like the 40, 45 second range. But uh, now an OT yet again. Seems like it has been a relatively even contest so far. Don't mind if I do. Looking to see if they can put up two goals now. They've still got that shield bear up on the top side. Two core flips available. They'll have to burn one to get that out. But Sharks still with an opportunity to move this one forward up to the top side. And the piercing shot is there yet again. Great use of that range on Estelle. Yeah, you generally want to keep it on the same side if uh, you have a teammate to pass to, just so that um, the teammate can intercept any special beams. <clears throat> this stealth can be uh, tricky to play against as well. For a goalie that doesn't have necessarily a lot of zone control, you know, Kai can very effectively stop the core or redirect it in the midfield with that kick of blast. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, doesn't have solid uh, zone control in the same way that, that Atlas does, who did just get a bit of a buff on this last micro patch that we saw today, uh, bringing up the the healing amount for the celestial intervention, not really uh, explicitly enhancing the goaltender uh, efficacy, but still, uh, not not a bad little look. So, uh, Carly has been having a bit of a difficult time here on the uh, the Kai playing against that Estelle, uh, but nothing they can handle. Still been a, a pretty good effort so far, and don't mind if I do. But certainly not out to an insurmountable lead right about now. Mm -hmm. I am mostly watching Twisty right now uh, as an X player, and they um, they just really need to get like 
a pass. I'm gonna take advantage of that. Oh. Mm. There goes the power cord. Straight past the goalie, and it'd be quite difficult to have that vision, especially uh, with the option of Vice going up to that top side. And hey, you mentioned the X, and it does feel like there's going to be a lot that kind of rides on that one, unfortunately. They're very last in the Awakening selection here. And there's not a whole, whole lot to go around, so it stands to reason that they might not get uh, what they're looking for. You can see Rasmus uh, is hovering over Big Fish right about now. Chrono Boost on a stealth, not terribly surprising. Maybe even a little bit of a deny against the Rasmus uh, or the Kai on the other side. And the Kai does go for perfect form. I can't really argue with that one. Big Fish mm -hmm. on Vice. Uh, Reverberation for X, though. I, I, I can't say that's necessarily terrible. You know, you might go to Staggertown uh, later on if a bulk up shows. Yeah, I would think that um, Dandy Penguin would try to deny the reverberation because um, part of the reason why X hasn't been too useful in this game is because he's mainly been staggered. Yeah, it certainly doesn't help when one of your primary brawlers is kind of uh, forced to stay back. Yeah. And uh, I, I did mention, you know, at the beginning, uh, I'm sure you, I'm sure you know Hachi, right? You know, X can be a little bit of a snowball. Right, if you get some quality awakenings, if you get in the face of the opponents, it can make their life just absolutely miserable. But if you can't really get started yourself, then uh, you, you might start to fall behind a little bit, and it can make it quite challenging actually to find a re-entry into the game. Yeah, um, early game you need to master your strike warring and learn how to combo your uh, your dash and your special together in order to either get KOs or to um, eliminate any stuffing, anti-stuffing potential. We do see a couple of strikers kind of fit into that role. Carly actually uh, somewhat blundering that last shield barrier. That one's going to go in. Danny Penguin actually picking up a goalie goal here. We did see the zone control from Sharks as the Estelle. And of course, you want to be cautious if you're kind of net there. We've seen multiple times now that Estelle has been perfect in the final third. But it's the Dubu actually gets the goal right there onto the top side. Mm -hmm. I think you can probably partially attribute that goal to uh, Estelle pressuring and just burning Kai's cooldowns. Because he could not barrage and he could not um, could not use his, uh, his boost. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that as well. I mean, the haste. Yeah. It can be quite difficult to correctly identify when you need to pop that haste as a Kai. I speak from experience, I uh, mostly play goalie and, you know, Kai, I, I was an Atlas main once upon a time, but Kai's kind of thrown on me as one of the uh, the better strikers in the game, so uh, I will I will admit, you know, it can be quite difficult at times. The Pelmer you're actually mm -hmm. stuffing Satiric's uh, Corporal Beer. They pop the call on emotes. Nice to see that they got that little bit of team chemistry. Mm -hmm. oh. is, it, uh, is it the... Uh, I think it's the uh, yeah the build different the 35% size you can see that those bell ringers coming out from Twisty have such a massive area of effect mm -hmm. cause some uh, major issues some major disruption on the defensive side I would say for don't mind if I do boo they've been having a little bit of trouble trying to deal with that in terms of zone control although uh, I mean the brawl hasn't really been as prevalent as I expected it was going to be at the outset of this match I think part part of that is because um, if you're X and you are built different. Um... You need to have some experience with aiming Bellringer. Because it's, it's a lot bigger, and the um, the sweet spot that you want is a lot farther out than you're used to. A little bit of extra so I've seen most of um, Twisty's Bellringers have been, uh, if they're impacting enemies, they've been closer. So they haven't been doing optimal damage. We're up the sour spot. I've seen Core Flips being popped with a relatively uh, pedestrian effort for the most part. But that clears the thorns again. It's the Estelle. I swear I say this on every broadcast that I see Estelle on. She always she always is just is, is just like not notable enough up until the point where you try to clear it away from your net, you know, away from the opposition and suddenly a crystal thorn just like a random crystal thorn or a rose warp or a piercing shot comes in and reminds you like, hey, she saw the map and she just scored on you. Just like there. There's just some angles that you can't use against Estelle when she has her special up. Yeah, very annoying times, I'm sure, for Carly. But like I said, yeah, it's been a, it's a fairly concerted effort on both sides in terms of defense. Uh, Danny Penguin and Carly doing a quality job both on the net, but they can't get that one away. This one goes up to Izzy, and they'll find just a little bit of a gap. And again, everything's on cooldown. 
We have 3 0 here. Set number two. Awakenings now on the board. And there is bulk up. There is bulk up available for X. If it does get down there, you have Missile Prop and Aerials, both uh, relatively quality for a stealth stacks on stacks. Super Surge, Prime Time. Really nothing bad uh, about this draft here. Prime time for Rasmus, stacks on stacks for Kai. That does make a heck of a lot of sense. Will it be the bulk up? No, it's going to be the missile prop. Oh, so now oh. Twisty, with every opportunity to start making this a much heavier brawl game. Mm -hmm. If he can get the damage in, um... I'm not sure. I think I think if I were uh, who do I do, I would have tried to leave pants it and leave prime time open uh, to give that to X. Either way, though, that's a quick KO. Izzy Boy and Danny Bang when left now in a 2v3. It's a beautiful angle there onto the bottom shield barrier. They're looking for number two. Pendulum Swing comes in a little bit of hard CC, but not quite there with the angle. Bellringer comes in for a bit of extra damage, and it's getting a little bit hectic here on the top side. Rose Warp, and now Carly left in this 1v2 is not able to defend both of the shield barriers, but does at least keep it away on the bottom side for now. You see, it's a very oppressive presence from the Vice and the Estelle, both with a lot of dunk potential against this Kai Hui. Like I said, doesn't have any hard zone control like an Atlas Cosmic Expanse. Mm -hmm. Especially that, with that Aerials. Um, that Aerials uh, Vice secondary. Um, yeah, the boost range um, buff is really going to be huge. Because you can essentially shoot the core and then stun the goalie. Fortunate that they don't have a cast to laughs, and of course I say fortunate in the eyes of the Dubers. Carly, speaking of, you know, uh, both the goalies have been doing a fairly good job on the defensive side, and Carly uh, is going to be able to get that one away. Nice little read on that angle. But those stacks on stacks are starting to build up now. They're just about at 100 stacks here and you can see just how much quicker they're able to move here the crystal thorns dunk is quality there sharks with a relatively common Estelle play but it doesn't make it any less of a dub for them well shield there is down now for don't mind if i do as well tofu all onto the bottom side a little bit of a boost there through the middle twisty is able to find a ko against izzy and now the power play can they make it happen they really need to take advantage of this power play and bring this game back um oh Barely misses the bell ringer shoot. Because he just needs to one like one strike wire, and then this is a, an easy point, especially with Estelle this low. Yeah, very critically, Twisty was pushing Estelle out of the zone. Sharks was actually quite threatening against the oh. net. Speaking of, is he finds the power cord angle even after losing their Estelle, which seemed like it was going to be a massive change in momentum there, but barely finds that additional momentum due to the OT, and Carly can't make the read. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, okay, the one issue I see with um, less experienced goalies that take speed is that they often um, they have to move around too much and the speed doesn't actually help them in their gameplay. Um, Sometimes you, you have the, the itchy trigger finger where you just keep moving at all times just so you feel like you have, uh, that you take advantage of the perk. <clears throat> well, I uh, can't say that I don't fall victim to that when I play goalie. I'm pretty much always moving. I want to actually mm -hmm. almost sneak its way in. Right about now, I mean, don't mind if I do boo. They're kind of on their leisurely stroll to victory right about now. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe there's the bell ringer for Twisty, finally! Is able to space that one exactly correctly and find the, the uh, dunk there against Danny Penguin. Well, the Dubers could really use a resurgence right about now. Of course, it is only round one, so even if you do lose here, you still have the, the uh, potential uh, to move forward in the Swiss, and you could make it into the Invitational still, even with a loss, but it's going to be a heck of a lot harder. Oh, actually, that is untrue. You have to go undefeated in order to oh. qualify. Oh, it I is a I... bit hmm. harsh, but yes. I, uh, only three teams. Yeah. I, uh, maybe, 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 maybe. There's a lot of tournament formats that go on. All right. I can't, I can't remember every single one of them. But, uh, that's yeah. all right. Trust the, trust the TO to know the rules of the tournament. That's, uh, that, that does make a degree of sense, I have to say. So, thanks, Achi. Appreciate that no with, a, with a little bit of a brain moment. 
we continue playing nonetheless, though. And uh, don't mind if I do, you know, continuing uh, with the pressure that they uh, had before. That's a wonderful angle there. Izzy Boy able to find the second shield barrier, and they're looking to move on to match point right here. And now, piercing shot. No, it's going to be a Rose Warp instead. They can't quite find the dunk that they were looking for, though, and they're going to stay in the zone. Sharks again throwing out their ability trying to find that dunk against Carly, but it seems like they might have wisened up just a little bit here to the top side. The Crystal Thorns have come out, and the Supernova is weighted wisely out there by Kai. And uh, Carly, I, I, gotta, I gotta hand it to them. They're doing a great job of adapting to the pressure that's being applied against them. Mm -hmm. They just need to force it through his alley and get to the X. Oh. Oh, nice. Whiplash stopping out the momentum of that core as well, keeping it away from their nets, and uh, we've seen them have a couple of opportunities at power plays before, and it seems like they have not been able to capitalize. This one's going to be no different. Yeah, they have been partially stuffed out by uh, Dubu having cast the last. Uh, it just means he can't, he can't move at all for like half a second, which is pretty rough as a forward. But it is. It's two goals now. Can they close this one out is the real question. Don't mind if I do, boo. Looking to move on 1-0 into Swiss. See if they can make a run for that invitational spot. The Crystal Thorns coming out very early on here. They almost had that second one, but Sharks denied. Supernova comes in and what a stop there from Carly. Like I mentioned, they are truly putting their heart and soul into this defense. Has not been enough so far. Can they turn this one around is the real question. And you just don't see them with the zone time. Sharks is very low on stagger right here and now. Satiric and Twisty can't seem to find the one, although the Death Touch does come in. Bit of Commentator's Curse, but I'll accept it in this one instance. Mm -hmm. Oh, one barrier. Just one more. I think this is a perfect time to use your core flip. Just to secure the first barrier. Oh. Uh, Whiplash again. On the recast, we've seen that twice now. Where Satiric is able to stop a uh, core flip the other way with that whiplash in the mid, but there it was again. Crystal Thorns with a bit of a dunk and brought down the second shield bear. Now it's Izzy against Carly. They get out to that one rapidly, Ooh. but now they're off the back. Their stacks are going to be gone, even if they can make it through oh. here. They won't. It's going to be a quality redirect from Izzy after picking up the KO against Carly, who again was looking so, so stalwart in the net for as long as they could possibly make it happen. And that's going to be a 3 0 set. Victory for Don't Mind If I Do Boo, and what an earned victory it was. Yeah, definitely some uh, good play from both from the team across the board. Um, yeah, can't fault any of their drafts. Um, yeah, uh, Sharks especially living for as long as they did was pretty impressive. Um, if they uh, got knocked out any sooner. Um, I think any of those sets could have gone uh, to who do do boo. <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately, they uh, did, did not go over to the Dubers, which I, I feel like may have may, you know, slight, slightly, uh, slightly in error. I won't say it's an error. Obviously, I, I still feel like they played a quality game though overall. Uh, like I said, you know, shouts to Carly OS, you know, 93 saves as opposed to Danny Penguin with 95. It was a, it was an incredible effort, but uh, Kiyachi, it looks like it, it, it is time. You know, we, we got the people what they wanted. It feels like it's too soon, uh, but we have been, we have been instructed to, to outro you off the stream. You got any, mm -hmm. any closing words? You know, we, we have, I think we have nine minutes, nine, nine, ten minutes set aside for monologues if you want. Mm -hmm. Uh, so mm -hmm. now would be the time for that. <laughs> um, well, I am going to be playing in the coaching tournament uh, that's happening on Wednesday, and I will actually be filling in goalie for my for my team's uh, run in the OSAS Invitational. Uh, it's just because our uh, previous goalie is on vacation, which is unfortunate. Um, yeah. Well, you're, so you're, next uh... time, next time you guys see me on this stream for OSAS is hopefully going to be, uh, me winning. Yeah, well, I, uh, I have to say, you know, if, if your, if your goal is going to be, uh, on vacation, I mean, you're, you're the tournament organizer, right? Can't you, you can maybe just, like, switch the dates around and then... 
<laughs> okay, maybe not. Maybe not. That might be. That might be a little bit. Uh, a little bit out of the question, but no. Uh, Achi, it's been great to have you on the stream. Um, and like I said, you know, look forward to uh, supporting them in the OSAS Invitational. I certainly do. Uh, and we'll we'll be eagerly awaiting your performance. Uh, do you have any last shouts before we uh, head you off? Um, huge. Huge shout outs to Jack Ryan for running this whole thing. Um, he's the main TO for this uh, series in Invitational. Um, stepped up, uh, got us like 500 Discord members the moment it was announced. Um, yeah, it, it's unfortunate that this is uh, that he is not going to join us for future OSAS, but. Well, thank you so much, Kiyach, for joining us. It's been a phenomenal time. I very much enjoyed having you in the booth with me. And uh, mm -hmm. on that note, uh, we will be waving goodbye to Kiyach. I hope you guys in the chat really enjoyed that. I know I did. Uh, <laughs> hopefully we have more in the future. I'm not going to make any promises, mostly because I don't have the power to do that. But uh, it looks like Swiss Round 2 is just about ready to get underway. So we'll bring Fem Bison uh, back into the fold here. Before too long, I believe we have Bison yeah, in the wing right about now. And they're the <laughs> welcome back on to the booth. Uh, uh, you got the chance to kind of take the back seat on that one and uh, yeah. and speak from the sidelines. What you, do you think? I mean, that that, that Archie casting, though. Uh, the Achi casting was pretty interesting. Very uh, very good analysis of the game. A lot of, uh, a lot of color going on, really. Uh, yes. Usually, I think a lot of the better performances I've seen for casting are like very play-by-play -play heavy, but I enjoyed that one as like a, from a spectator perspective of just like hearing more of like an analytical side, not so much, you know, like every play is being described as it's happening. So, you know, definitely a different take, but I enjoyed it personally. Yeah, and uh, like I said, you know, it's, it's what everybody wants, all right? You know, I, I can be out here and, uh, <laughs> you know, I can have my, you know, however, however many years of experience, none of that really matters because... Because, uh, you know, Kuyashi has really been a staple of the community for some time. And, Absolutely. you know, I, yeah, it's worth it's worth giving shouts, uh, obviously, to the people who helped make this happen. Um, as Achi said, you know, the people who organize these events uh, and the, the players and viewers uh, that make this all possible, right? You know, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about uh, Omega Strikers if not for the fact that, uh, you know, so many people were invested in it. So we want to give a huge shout out to everybody who is watching right now, everybody who is playing. And of course, uh, Saya on the production as well, I feel like deserves a shout out. I say it every single time we're on the stream and I will continue to do so until the, uh, the end of time. Um, well, maybe not quite the end of time. I'm <laughs> assuming Sai is not going to be producing Omega Strikers for, for that the long. Rest I'm of assuming, his life. I, no, yeah, I'm assuming but... I probably won't be casting Omega Strikers for the rest of my life. That would be pretty cool. Uh, but I, oh I, no, I, I might I get don't... tired of the game by that point. I think uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, give it give it sixty years, and it might start to lose a little bit of its luster. I I don't yeah, know. I, I don't I'm, know. Who probably. knows? Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but we, we we shall see. I do believe we have our next match uh, coming up right about now. It's going to be. It's going to be a team that we have seen before. It's going to be Winton from Overwatch. And Winton uh, Overwatch. Incredible. Winton Overwatch. <laughs> so I, I, I am I am quite looking forward to that one. I, I have to say, uh, again, I know we mentioned it pretty much every single week, but uh, I, I already mentioned it actually once on this very show, but I, <laughs> I have the utmost respect for the players and the team names that they come up with uh, because you know it, is, it is quite creative. Yeah. Yeah. Winton from Overwatch is all just people I am uh, I'm familiar with, or at least two of them, Mike Mart and Vamp One Seven One Eight Iyer. Uh, both of them, I think, I have uh, I I've interacted with them quite a bit, so I think uh, I'm. It'll be pretty interesting to see how they play. The last time I saw them play, I was coaching them in in houses, but we'll see um, how much they've improved since then. That was a while ago. Coaching them through in houses. This is going to be a, an analytical analysis. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. It's gonna be it's gonna be an <laughs> analytical broadcast here with them, Bison. It, it's gonna be well, it, well, going I, over uh, Winton from Overwatch. Yeah, it's like um, if I see if I see Mike Mart miss a save, I think I have to I think I have to flame. I think you're contractually that. obliged to like DM yeah. on Discord and say you suck, essentially. Okay, <laughs> okay maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> that that would be how you say. Hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? To yeah, toxic. Yeah. I think that would be. I think that would be kind of toxic. I believe we're gonna have struggle bus here on the blue side uh, for this go around on Oni Village. Yeah. No. Uh, the Estelle ban going out uh, for sure is something I personally agree with as a goalie player, especially on this map. Yeah. She is so able to just 
I mean, you saw like what Estelle was doing last match, but like imagine that tenfold, right? Just the barrier shape and like the way this map is played means that Estelle really gets to work here. So I think smart ban from Struggle Bus here, but good uh, good drafting from both teams. I think Razus and Taro very strong picks right now, and uh, Dubut I think is going to be a better goalie than Vice though. And this actually actually that's Atlas goalie, my bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, definitely going to be a better goalie than Vice because Vice won't be in net. Uh, I do agree. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. No. Uh, I mean, Atlas did just get the buff, you know, it's something I mentioned briefly earlier on, but it is a buff to the Celestial Intervention, which, again, has a little bit less, I would say, impact on their raw goaltending potential, and oh, that's unfortunate, no abilities there uh, for Kribus, they're going to be able to get that core away, and it will actually be two Shield Barriers down instantaneously here uh, for Struggle Bus. So, well, I guess living up to their name, although I'm not really sure if that's a good thing in this scenario, you can see a little bit of that Celestia intervention buff. Chris actually reaching I a lot of help right there. My God! And uh, yeah, I think uh, actually, I think you said something about actual intervention maybe not being super effective for pure goaltending, but in a, against a comp like Rasmus and Taro, that's a lot of damage to be contending with, right? So having that ability to, you know, make sure your forwards survive a little bit longer so you're not put into super high pressure situations all the time. And speaking of Vamp scoring the first goal off of an incredible hook, uh, but you know, not having that high pressure 1v3 situation being in your face into a high damage comp like this is good, uh, especially as an Atlas player, right? So we're going to see if that intervention is going to make any more difference on this point. But Count Swagula putting the pressure on early. However, it's going to be Disrespect who's doing most of the damage. Swagula close to being on life support. Health bar looking close to cracking. Disrespect's going to miss the primary, but Vamp is looking for the scoring instead of the damage up from top. But Glipier from Shadow PR and Disrespect's going to find the punish. And now it's actually Struggle Bus who are not going to be struggling as they put the pressure on Mike Mart and Vampire. Maybe uh, trying to lull their opposition into a false sense of security in the last set. Oh, that's a wonderful combo. Disrespect off the side, threatening the down low one, two into the supernova from Kribis makes goal number one. Uh, quite a clean one at that. And uh, while I'm thinking about it, we should mention uh, what's on offer here in terms of awakenings. We have heavy impact on Kribis and disrespect twin drive on Shadow PR and naturally twin drive for Dubu and Rasmus on the other end, of course, with Count Swagulo rounding out with with a uh, with a heavy impact. Speaking of, Kribis almost showing off the side there with that death touch way up into the top side. We saw a couple of those in the last match. Uh, certainly not out of the question for Rasmus uh, to be one of the star brawlers in this scenario. Even though Zentaro has been finding uh, much larger uh, foothold in the competitive meta. Rasmus has always been there, and that death touch can be incredibly lethal against staggered enemies, even from across the map. I mean, absolutely. Death touch has gotten some pretty insane kills, uh, given that, given uh, what it's meant to do and how much it can, how much distance it needs to kill you from the wall. It's a, it's a little unreal. But also, tw you mentioned twin drive for uh, the tw uh, Atlas, of course. I think that's going to be a huge deal for uh, this match, right? That's probably Alice's best awakening. It's one of the most game-changing awakenings in the game. Uh, like, game-changing awakening character pairings in this game. And we're going to see if Shadow PR can make use of it. And he definitely is right now on this point, holding that barrier down for years while his forwards put the pressure on uh, Mike Mart here. And they're going to find the kill, uh, find the goal from the pressure. What a flip from Kribis. Just sneaking it in, pocketing the shot on the bottom corner there. Be two one up for struggle, but certainly not struggling right now against Winton from Overwatch. Worth noting, additionally, you know, this disrespect actually did get saved by an Atlas Celestial intervention earlier on during that volley. So, additionally, you know, on top of the fact that they've been doing a pretty, uh, pretty notable job on the defense, they did have a uh, moment. I mean, even getting one Celestial intervention save uh, during a game. Uh, it can be reasonable. This is a reasonable excuse for an Atlas to say, like, yeah, I, I made a significant impact. But you talk about that twin drive, the cosmic expanse, uh, especially here in Oni Village, it can be so impactful to have that hard zone control, and especially when you're playing into a Zentaro, if you basically just stuff their combo. Same can go for Rasmus. This one's on the top side, and somehow they get it away. The cosmic expanse, I think, had the last lap there. Thunderstruck now in from Krivis, looking for the power cord dunk, but it's not quite there. They're going to continue upfield. Disrespect does have core flip available, gets that one away from Count Swagula, which is objectively an awesome name. Celestia so Intervention comes out. Look at all that healing. Disrespect staggered and immediately back to a stable state. That's where the buff comes in handy. This is what's making Atlas a little bit more viable now, but they can't get it away in the strike war. It's going to be Vamp 17-18 Ire to put them on set point here. I mean, both teams actually putting on a 
pretty great performance right now. Both uh, Every single point has been pretty clean from both sides. And Shadow PR actually, you know, making that defense work. You saw him using the Expanse. You made, you made a mention of it. I mean, that Twin Drive definitely putting in work, but so is Shadow PR being able to use the ability so well, right? Bit late there, loses the top barrier, but it is only Village. Uh, most of the time, you're not really worrying about defending two barriers. As long as you can hold one, you're good, as long as your goal is open. And speaking of goals being open, Winston from Overwatch, now on the back foot. Struggle Bus putting the pressure on Disrespect. Gets the pass over to Krivis, who finds the teleport and goal. What a play from Krivis. Yeah, in with the power cord, and then the Thunderstruck as well blinks in, even if they had been able to get that one away. Yeah. Seems like there wasn't much of a chance for them to keep it that way. And Timeless Creator instantly on offer here for Atlas, who picks up the MVP. They are going to be loving that one. They take it away from the Dubu as well. Uh, who might be taking Castle last on this one. They I will think, yeah, go for Castle last. last. Yeah. That does make a degree. It's done specialized training for Vice. No significant surprise for me on that one. Rasmus potentially wants to look. Oh, no, they do take the Super Surge, probably yeah. as a deny. Prize Fighter uh, goes over to the Zotaro of disrespect, though. I also don't think uh, Prize Fighter or Missile Prop are incredibly impactful on Rasmus. Missile Prop makes it hard to place your hook where you need to be, and Rasmus isn't getting too many kills all the time. And uh, I think, especially not this match, the deny pick is very important, right? Though I think for sure Struggle Bus won that draft, getting that Atlas Timeless Creator Twin Drive setup. That is probably the cool. best setup. Just look at Expanse. Oh my god. <laughs> the well, yeah. wall not even coming close to comparing. While Disrespect, I think, is the one to get the first barrier for Struggle Bus, and they're looking for the seconds. Count Swagula is on life support. Tribus and Disrespect looking for this kill. Can't quite find it missing the dashes, but the pressure is there, and they're going to find it now. Uh, with this power play, if they can get this barrier, it's going to be huge for them to get this quick 1-0 lead on this set. Ooh. Holy defense there from Shadow PR. Looked like it was just about all of a certain that that was going to go through. They do actually burn their core flip, maybe a bit prematurely. But worth noting as well, you know, with Timeless Creator, not only do the Cosmic Expanses become a lot more uh, impactful, but uh, the Celestial Intervention also sticks around for longer, and it's got a much larger radius, which frees up Strikers to make plays, and speaking of making plays, the Death Touch there from Vampire. Really no surprises. I mean, you throw it up to the top side, and Atlas has basically nothing that they can do from that far away. Even a Strike Shot or an Astral Projection is going to be hard-pressed to get that core away. So well played there from Vampire with the positioning. Absolutely. Vamp showing an incredible understanding of how to score on Atlas right now. Something a lot of, like, you know, players that, you know, participate, that might participate in OSAS. Uh, tend to struggle with scoring on Atlas is a pretty hard ask for a lot of the, you know, newer players to this game. But Vamp absolutely making sure uh, to express that he does know. And now Vamp is also looking to put the pressure on again with Swagula. Swagula perfectly waiting out the Disrespect dash, but Disrespect still having an extra strike gets it through. And now Mike Mart is dead, and it's going to be Swagula playing goalie for Winton from Overwatch. The flip goes out, but Strike Ward by Disrespect. Incredible stuff there. Just so many hits from Zentaro. It's very hard to flip through them right there. When, uh, struggle Bus making sure that they're never down for very long. And, you know, that's mostly how the first set went as well. I think Struggle Bus, uh, I, I said they're living up to their name in the first set. It doesn't really seem to be the case so, so much no. anymore. Although, again, that might be partially due to the Cosmic Expanse having such a massive impact. I mean, we talk about Twin Drive along with Timeless Creator for Atlas. I mean, part of the power of that combo comes from the fact that your Cosmic Expanse is usually off of cooldown, uh, right? You, you can't cast them in quick succession. They have about a one second long cooldown, similar to a strike. So usually, before your Cosmic Expanse, the first one at least, really starts to dissipate and loses its effect, you can cast another one pretty much immediately. So if you really, really need it, you, you can cast it pretty much twice in succession. Of course, you don't want to use two stacks of them, I imagine, right away. The Supernova, though, making itself known. The specialized training on Krivis has also been a uh, relatively high impact awakening. And so far, the Death Touch doesn't quite have the reach there. Krivis going to go for the cross of Disrespect, but actually, the rollout was there. The Somersault, though, stops just a moment too soon. And Disrespect is going to have goal number two. Really unfortunate for Mike Mart there. I mean, as you said, moment too soon, inches away from being able to make that save. But we're going to see if Winton from Overwatch can save this game on this point here. It is set point for set two, and they are definitely uh, the ones currently on the struggle bus, surprisingly. And Krivis with the flip right in front of the barrier. It's going to be a quick one. The goals are open for Winton from Overwatch, and Mike Mart is down. I mean, struggle bus looking absolutely dominant right now. So much damage being dealt. Disrespect with the prize fighter as well. Something that we uh, only briefly mentioned 
Uh, he's just a li that little bit of extra power on Zentaro, and even if they're not specifically hunting for those KOs, it's a consistent threat, and now we have one two punch <laughs> on offer for Zentaro. Things are about to get pretty dangerous for the back, for the back end here. I mean, the defensive side uh, for Winton from Overwatch, I, I feel like they... Uh, prime time for doing okay. I'm not going to say it's a bad pick, but I feel like Stagger Swagger might have actually been one of the yeah, better right? ones. I think uh, after dying twice in that set and being yeah. like yeah, dying twice there and just not having like the defense to stay alive and defend, um, I think you really do want that Stagger Swagger. I don't know if Vamp getting the Stagger Swagger was the play. I mean, he's not really getting hit. The most deaths are coming from Mike Martin Count Swaggler right now. They're just focusing the damage onto those two. But we're going to see if Vamp can make that Stagger Swagger work. As we know, historically strong awakening. Um, Vamp I, isn't being targeted a lot, you say. Yeah. Uh, I guess I spoke a little bit too soon, but it doesn't look like they're just targeting Vamp. Count Swagula also goes down. Mike Mart forces it to a 1v3. Can he hold it down? It looks like he almost does, but what a strike for using that primary from uh, Vice there. Great power core to take that second barrier. Goal is going to be open for Winter from Overwatch, and it is dangerous. Disrespect is pushing up. The primary goes out, gets it through Mike Mart as we 1 0 on set 2 0 up for Struggle Bus. And it's looking real dangerous for Winter from Overwatch right now. Um, they've been losing the drafts, and I think that's really starting to show right now. It's like accumulating. Yeah, level difference here between Disrespect and Count Swaggio is kind of what I'm looking at primarily. Uh, I mean, looking at these two forwards, obviously, it's a difference in Stagger, but Disrespect also has a Siphoning Wand, which means that they're doing a little bit more max HP damage as a result. So not only do their opposition have less HP, but they're having a more difficult time dealing with the damage. That's being, you know, applied against them. And you can see it here. They just didn't have any way to contest that out in front. Uh, they can't walk into the midfield because they're going to get instantaneously destroyed. We're seeing a level difference of four now between Kalos Wagula and Kribis, who has been doing absolutely Herculean amounts of damage. It's such a lethal composition so far with the Awakenings that have been selected. And then you have the Celestial Intervention there. Just as a reminder, if you thought you could KO the opposition right now as Winton from Overwatch, you have another thing coming to you. What can they possibly do to make this comeback happen? It's two goals against here on match point here in round two of the Swiss, and it feels like it's all but over. I mean, they're going to have to pull a miracle to win this one. And Vamp, I mean, might be the one to do it. We've seen his Raz's play has been kind of cooking this match. But Mike Ward's going to go down again. Great Thunderstruck goes out from Kribis, finds him on the edge of the board. And they're going to find the goal as well. 3-0. What an incredibly fast game from Struggle Bus. As soon as they got rolling after that first draft, it felt a little bit over. I mean, that was just a dominant performance. Good understanding of what they should be tanking and how to you know, play the composition they chose. Just great stuff from Struggle Bus in that match. Yeah, and I mean, that's not to say that uh, the opposition wasn't doing a good job with their composition. Vampire uh, making very good use of the Death Touch as Rasmus. Uh, but Count Swagula, I think you can pretty plain and simple see, you're just looking at the scoreboard on my end here, they they were not having the greatest time as Zentaro. You know, you don't have a whole load of shots on target, which, you know, in this particular instance, I feel like they were more trying to serve as a midfield, which, fair enough, that does make a degree of sense. But on the other side, you know, you have Kribis, who's out damaging you by 5,000. Disrespect is very close behind, uh, but you only have Count Swagula, who's really the primary damage dealer on the other end. And Vampire uh, opted for Twin Drive, didn't go for heavy impact, so was trying not to focus on the damage as heavily, and that's kind of where uh, the brawling got out of hand for them. Shadow PR, uh, you know, fantastic effort on the defense. Didn't really feel like it was super necessary in some ways, to be honest, because Struggle Bus were so prevalent on the attacking side. Uh, again, later on during that game, Kribis and Disrespect felt like a they were a two-man team there where they had a third player just kind of in the back who was dedicated to defending a net that was never threatened. I mean, for sure, yeah. And also, I mean, even though it didn't have that much effect over the overall game, when it had effect, I mean, it, he looked kind of unscorable, right? Like, yes. those Cosmic Expanses last second, he would not have had those without Twin Drive, and those definitely saved a lot of the goals in set one, which is when the game was closest. So I think that Twin Drive draft um, I'm surprised Atlas didn't get banned by Winter from Overwatch, actually. I, I think Oni Village Twin Drive Atlas is kind of notoriously uh, the most unscorable setup in the game. But um, I think just smarter drafting from Struggle Bus really won them that game there. Better uh, team comp and generally, like, better goalie pick there. Though I think the quality of play was absolutely there for both teams, but it was just a little bit smarter, a little more thought out from Struggle Bus. Well, I mean, even, even to that point, you know, I, I don't want to don't want to take away too much from Winston from Overwatch yeah. because you, you mentioned smart drafts on the side of Struggle Bus 
And well, I completely agree with you on that point. At the same time, you got to look at the very first draft. Uh, I feel like it was it was one of the most uh, telling uh, ones because it was Shadow PR who got the MVP. It was Shadow PR first pick on the first carousel after getting Twin Drive and had Timeless Creator on offer. Absolutely. And, and then even from there, you know, you have the double cosmic expanse, which have massive radius, nothing that Rasmus and Zentaro can realistically do about it. It's just a complete stuff on defense. And it was used to great effect at that. You know, you can still, you know, kind of suck as a goalie, even if you have those awakenings. But Shadow PR did a great job. And then on top of that, even if Count Swagula and Vampire had been able to get into the Brawl game, the Celestial Intervention has twice the size. It just got buffed, so the healing is way higher, as we saw very early on in this game. And it lasts longer, so even if you do get knocked out during that Celestial Intervention, the enhanced uptime means that you're more likely uh, to, to be revived. So there was just no winning for Winton from Overwatch. As soon as that first draft came out, unless they Absolutely. had a massive counter into that Twin Drive Timeless Creator Atlas, it felt like there was not a whole lot of hope for them. And that's, that's what ended up happening. You know, it was another uh, set win for uh, Struggle Bus, and then they had the draft advantage as a result, and it just kept going and going and going. Absolutely, just a bit of a carousel moment, given yes. how, the, how the game currently works, right? And, um, you know, not to dis not, not to, uh, this Winston from Overwatch quality of play. I mean, Vampire absolutely cooking with the death touches there. We're playing some incredible stuff and Mike Mart holding on 1v3 as best he could. But the situation was just a little bit rough. Those carousels are a little uh, stacked in the favor of Struggle Bus. Yeah. But good game from both teams. I think we're gonna be cutting to a break as we wait for the next round to start up. Yes, just a quick little one. Uh, round three will be on the way, but we still have some matches that are finishing up. If you wanna follow along, exclamation mark bracket in the Twitch chat there, and you can see for yourself when things are uh, starting to get underway for round three. But we're gonna take a short break, allow ourselves uh, a moment to rest the voice, and we'll be right back with more of the Omega Strikers Amateur Series.
Welcome back, everybody. We're going to be getting into game three of the Swiss bracket very soon. We've got a pretty interesting matchup here today. Two undefeated teams, Merchant Court and Black Cores. I don't think I'm legally allowed to say their full team name. It would be against Twitch Terms of Service. Look, all I'm going to say about it is for the players who are on that team. Really? <laughs> really? Anyway, uh, we're getting into the match, though. Demon Days on offer here. One game to rule the... No, wait, that's the wrong thing. Uh, one, one game to decide who moves on as undefeated in the Swiss bracket. And we do have uh, Black Cores on the blue side. This go around. Uh, that is, of course, assuming that it's on the same side for me and Saya. I'm assuming uh, I it, it is. is. Yes, blue, it blue, has blue, been, uh, blue for me. It has been every single time so far. Speaking of, Spectator has been uh, working fairly well tonight. And now that I've said that, of course, it's going to uh, be completely broken. We <laughs> see the drafts here. We have a Dubu forward, baby. Let's and a Luna go. goalie. That might actually, well, I mean, let's not jump to conclusions. I, me, and Vice are both goalies uh, uh, as well. So we'll, we'll see True. who True. is in what position. I said Luna goalie, by the way, as in this is a surprise fit. Oh, yeah, Luna goalie. We do, see, yeah. we do see the Dubu goalie yeah. as well, though. So, uh, yeah. Interesting stuff. Merchant Court going to open this game by getting a barrier, but Aethros is going to die for that. Soldier Soul TTP looking to put the pressure on. Going to trade barriers, though. Bit unfortunate there. Goal now open for Black Cores. It's going to be dangerous as Draco Cap finds a double kill. What a cyber swipe. Now the pressure is on for Hethra and Suited Bashiro one to uh, capitalize here, but it's a bit of a struggle. They can't seem to find the positioning, but the log is gonna seek it right through Hero Hero. Interesting first point, bit of a chaotic one. 1-0 one -oh up for Merchant Court. People, uh, people of the world, people of the chat, this is one of the matches of all time. Yes, just, <laughs> just, just that. As Hethra takes the first goal, as you mentioned, with the rollout, as Dubu in the net. That was an, indeed an interesting one. As you mentioned, the double kill with the cyber swipe. There goes one. Now it's going to be seriously taken off the bottom. My god, Kuro can't get the help for the life of them in this match. Their forwards simply cannot stay on the field. I want to point out the starting awakenings were built different in perfect, perfect form, and Draco Cat isn't even using built different to get these kills. He's just finding them. This is some incredible Ivy cyber swiping going on from uh, Draco Cat. I guess it's in the name, right, Cat? But Hathra, uh, not gonna be unable to hold on. Bit of a weird bounce there to take that second barrier. Kuro Hero now with the flip still loses the second barrier though, and now they're trying to find the clear. It's gonna be just a bit awkward, I think, for both teams. This map always just a bit strange, even at the top level of play. Kuro Hero finds the dash though. Doesn't quite get as much reward from it as he like has to eject back looking for the pass out, but what a glitch pop from Draco Cat sniping in the top pocket there. 2 0 out for Merchant Court. Just displaying that Aimee does not have to be right next to you to dunk you in a strike war. That glitch pop. I would wager you a glitch pop can have a reasonably high skill ceiling in terms of uh, in between Ivy mains. So, ooh, yes. Zerg Leo. Actually, actually, a bit of an early KO there. With the barrier beam, we'll see if they can push this forward. Draco Cat taking a load of damage now as well. They're gonna go in and try to make this KO happen, or at least get the opposition staggered. Give up on it for just a moment. As uh, Kuro is able to dive in with that boost, picks up one now, two shield bears steering Leo. Going to see what they can't do to get this one forward. Draco Cat blinks in, and now the barrier beam's not quite there to get it through. They could surely use a goal back now after having such a difficult time on the first two volleys. That one's gonna be pretty free for steering Leo. Just no pace there from Draco Cat, and they will get one on the board. Hathor getting just a bit impatient there, moving up a bit too early. Especially very dangerous when your barriers are down on any map. Uh, but especially on this one, right? Those speaker cones in the middle love pushing the core directly out of the corner, uh, out of its path into the corner on its way into your goal. So a bit risky to play from Hathor there, gets punished for it, and the barrier is also going to go down from there. Good play going on from the Black Horse right now, managing to mount a bit of a comeback, denying Draco Cat the flip there, but the Cyber Swipe comes out, and they're actually going to find the kill. Their goal is open, but it is 1v3. If they can capitalize here, they would be very much back in this match. I really hate to say it, but it feels like it's <laughs> up to the double KO again. Kuro receiving credit that time. Oh! <laughs> God, he 
kidding me? I was just gonna mention. It looks. I don't know if I saw the same thing as everybody else. All right, but it did look like they blundered both their shield bears in that one, right? You know, a with, little bit, a little bit, a little bit. They blundered both their shield bears, and like, oh, it just like it just like saunters you know, in behind them, and they're just like, oh shoot, I've got nothing for this. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Absolutely incredible scenes here on Demon Days. I mean, we were talking about Hathor getting a little bit impatient, but I guess Kuro is also not off the hook for that. Hey, Unfortunately, it happens. <laughs> it happens, it happens. Uh, Gotta get the prime time though. The extra rocket maybe allowing them a little bit more impact in the midfield. Uh, I think not too many incredibly dangerous picks uh, in this draft right now. Maybe the spec training on Vice gives them a little more damage, but with Vice, you're usually looking to steal evades rather than do damage, given that most people will evade it on reaction. And just as I see it, Sirian Leo does, but the Supernova is going to be able to take the first barrier away from Black Horrors. And uh, Vice, again, suited Basher 01. I mean, MVP of this point taking two barriers. Can they also find this goal? Draco Cat looking to get the pass through, but Searing Leo making great use of Asher's strength in winning Strike Wars right now. Make sure Draco Cat can't find the pass they want. And now the pressure was on Merchant Court to hold these barriers to make sure that uh, Black Horse can't get an opportunity to score here. And they are going to find one, actually. Ooh. KO. Oh. You're on the back end, Kuro and Soldier. Now left alone here on the back end glitch. Pop up to Draco. Yeah, they're able to make the play now. Suited Basher with the strike wall win. That makes it 1-0. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, they continue with their advantage. Merchant Court, they're looking solid here in terms of momentum, despite the fact uh, that Black Cores were able to get a little bit of a resurgence there in set one. It has since been a rocky road for them. The Tofu Wall comes out. It's not quite enough to push through to Basher off the top. You can see fairly low stagger here for all three players on the defensive side on the blue end. Searing Leo and Kuro now in this 2v3 scenario and both relatively low on stagger. Core flip is available here for the Luna in defense. They actually dive in with the boost. I thought they might have gone for the flip. They will hold on to it for now. Well, Black Horse actually, uh, I think they kind of need to capitalize here, right? They've got the advantage now, finally have that barrier advantage over Merchant Court, and they are going to use it. Searing Leo is going to score one to bring it to 1-1, one, one. but I mean, they've been struggling a bit with their own advantages, and here they've managed to turn that hit around for themselves. We're going to see if they can bring this match to be just a bit closer in this set. Uh, kickoff goes out from Suited Basher 01. They're going to be looking for the barriers. They've been uh, a bit of a strike warrior, uh, I like to say, in this match. Winning those strike wars and getting those barriers, and just as I say, they're going to find another Black Core is back on their back foot once again. Mayhap. See if they can get this one away. It does not look like it. Suited Badger actually just going to watch that one go in. And with good reason. You know, it's on the way. He yeah. got no goalie on the back end. Dubu uh, just a little bit behind it. Makes it 2 1. That's the simple as that. Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, this game has been a bit of a, uh, a, a chaotic mess, if you will, even by OSAS standards. I mean, I think that is kind of an effect of Demon Deus, though. As a map, the map being the way it is, those speaker cones, everything being so cramped, the way the barriers are positioned, uh, you tend to get games like this from time to time. And as, as I'm saying it, I mean, suited Basher 01, I've been praising him, but he does it again. He's just winning these strike wars at the barrier line and taking them. Uh, Hathra, though, holds on pretty well, unfortunately dies, but that was an excellent clear from a very dangerous situation there. Now it's up to suited Basher 01 and Draco Cat to hold on, but it looks like they aren't going to be able to. Draco Cat dies, and now it's 3v1. Suited Basher has to hold on for his team, but Hathra is going to respawn, alleviating the pressure just a bit. Searing Leo, however, in position to score, looking for it. The log goes out, beats out the Strike War, and uh, Merchant Court a bit more safe than before. A bit more safe, but uh, so remains to be seen. That's a wonderful defensive core flip. Unfortunately, they don't have the angle to get that one away. We're going to have to deal with the ramifications of their actions now. It might be match point against here. Just a moment, Suited Basher. Very low in stagger, but they find the angle up to the top side. It went straight through Soldier, but I don't think they were expecting that one. And vision can be very important, but you know, some of the instances you just simply do not expect a play like that. So now, Merchant Court, they've got a significant advantage with a specialized training here on the Vice Prize Fighter in heavy impact, both up for grabs, which to me look like very tempting. Choices, yeah, no, they're they dangerous for prize sure. fighter here. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, surprised they didn't go for the heavy impact and leave Draco the prize fighter. I mean, Draco getting like so many kills in the first set, and they're still doing the damage, finding the KO opportunities. I think with the heavy impact damage on Vice and then Draco having the prize fighter, you could have a very dangerous setup where Aimee can just kill you from anywhere after Vice removes your health bar from existence. But still, 
with the prize fighter on suited basher 01 who has been playing well and doing the damage it is still absolutely dangerous for black forest right now and they're gonna have to play uh very on their toes to avoid dying and as i'm saying it two health bars get immediately evaporated for them and uh, asher just goes down unfortunate times you know he, asher has been kind of uh falling out of favor i would say of late and in the uh, top level meta i think that's fair to say uh, for the most part, at the very least, we do see a couple of uh, players, I believe, still, you know, kind of, kind of gravitating towards it. Maybe it's a little bit of an off pick, but here it does not seem to be working out so, so well for Searing Leo. They've had some limited success. I'm not going to say that it's been an absolute stomp one way or the other. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a little bit left to be desired, although I think that might be uh, more just because Suited Basher and Draco Cat have been doing so well in the midfield. They're able to pick up the second shield barrier right here. The Tofu Wall actually uh, detrimenting Hathor quite significantly. They lose both their shield barriers. The Supernova goes back the other way. The barrier beam is almost there for Searing Leo. Things are starting to heat up here. At the beginning of set number three, down to the bottom side, Hathor is able to get it away. Core flip now from Soldier up to the top side. The Abnormal <laughs> Crater comes in. It's going to be an own goal from Kuro, whether wittingly or not. That's 1-0 out of Merchant Court. That such an unfortunate moment. I mean, Soldier Soul TTV almost had it, but unfortunately, has it just a bit, and it leads to a bit of a freak accident for Black Horse, if you will. But they're still in this match, and it's not over yet. Suited Basher 01 looking to make sure it is, gets the first barrier. Can they find another? Hathor actually leaving the gold box to ensure that their offense can get through, but Suited Basher is now in the Dubu Wall prison. Um, Incredible stuff here in this match right now. And Suited Basher, once again, I keep saying his name, but he keeps playing well. Just teleports in, finds the goal. Pockets it just like that. Really doesn't seem to be uh, that easy. Um, Suited Basher just kind of walks up and, and, and scores. You know, it uh, just, just score. Seems like it really is that easy. They're already up on the match point. And this seems like it was going, I mean, at the outset, you know, you looked at this match and you figured it was going to be a little bit closer. But at this point in time, Merchant Court are poised to take the victory. It'll be a core flip here, popped by Hathra, and she'll find the shield barrier on the other end. It's completely free now on the half of the cores. Suited Bastard with the Supernova and up to the top side and in. It's going to be a 3-0 in set three and 3-0 in sets. Merchant Court move on to round four in dominating style. I mean, that was a chaotic match, but for sure, Merchant Court found their, you know, found their groove in all the chaos and were able to capitalize on just how confusing that match was, really, and making sure they were able to, you know, score and get the kills they needed to win that. Good stuff from them. And a good attempt from Black, uh, from the cores. They played very well, but Demon Days, unfortunately, just a bit of a insane map. <laughs> Demon Days is a, uh, a cruel mistress at times. But I do feel like... Uh, you know, unlike, unlike the last series that we saw, the last game that we saw, it felt like there was still a chance for a, a resurgence uh, from the cores here. Merchant Court, of course, I, I think playing to the best of their abilities, and, but they didn't necessarily have a raw win on the draft uh, in terms of Awakenings, in terms of Strikers. I think Curl on the Luna, it might have been a little bit optimistic, uh, you know, but coming in here, uh, Dubu forward, Asher forward, Luna, I can see it working. You know, there's a lot yeah. of potential to keep that core upfield and really cause some havoc for the opposition. The problem is they simply could not make it happen. Suited Basher and Draco Cat were much too slippery and the Tofu Wall, when it came out from Hathra every once in a while, would basically put a complete stop to any sort of momentum that they had moving forward. Uh, and, you know, and add on to that the fact that Kuro, you know, they can't stay upfield. They have to eject out. They have to go back onto their own side. And once they do that, once they're playing defense, Luna is, you know, notably not an incredibly strong goalie when it comes to playing specifically on your back end. And of course, they have the eject button. They can't have that strike shot for the additional zone coverage. So I feel like that's kind of where the downfall was here uh, for Absolutely. the cores. And uh, Merchant Court, they're able to capitalize. Merchant Court also uh, doing something pretty interesting, running almost a sort of like double midfielder, double controller comp on Demon Deus. While Vice is pretty usually picked, right? Like she, that massive damage output. Uh, Imi is less of a common pick on that map. Not really so much a brawler uh, on a map that really, really likes brawler team comps. But I think they were able to make it work with the way Draco Cat was playing. And Draco Cat in the chat saying it was uh, very intense. Well, you did a great job. I, I just saw that. But, um,. <laughs> Yeah, just a generally great play style from uh, Merchant Court, making it work, making their team comp work for a map that doesn't usually favor that, and a good adaptation there. Yeah, 
And I mean, looking around the bracket a little bit, again, uh, this one ended a little bit quicker than I think we were even expecting. Uh, so we do still have quite a few matches that are going on around the bracket, exclamation mark bracket in the chat if you want to catch yourself up on how the rounds are panning out. Uh, but we're, of course, moving into territory where you win once more and you're in. That's where Merchant Court uh, presently sits. I don't know if we have any of the other uh, 3-0 matches, uh, or excuse me, the other 2-0 matches resolving just yet. It's entirely possible. Uh, I, I haven't been able to keep uh, too close of an eye on it because of how rapidly uh, we've been moving through the stages. Um, but yeah, you can check out exclamation mark bracket in the chat if you want to and kind of get an update on that. And uh, you know, speaking on that note, it's likely that we're going to take a bit of a break here. I think we're planning on a caster swap as well. Yes. So it might be a, a little bit longer as we get, uh, you know, the new duo in here. They're going to be going through every single uh, one of the qualifying rounds in Swiss round four. Right. Uh, for your viewing pleasure, of course. All still best of ones, though, Bison. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Just, uh, uh, just, uh, just before we leave as well, uh, you know, to go to break, do you have anything you want to shout out, Squid, uh, for Omega Strikers or yourself, really? Uh, I, I mean, not, not really a, not really a whole <laughs> lot. Not. You know, I, I'm just, I just enjoy being part of the community, right? You know, I guess if you, if you enjoy the broadcast, then thanks. You know, like I said before earlier on in the, in the show, it's really nice to have all of you guys out here and yeah. viewing. And yeah, if you, if you really enjoyed, you know, follow me on Twitter at Squid TV. Um, I'll, uh, yeah. I would appreciate it. You know, follow follow here as well. You know, if you're if you're new to the channel, twitch.tv slash bestie and slot, it's probably uh, the one spot where you can expect to see some of the most Omega Strikers action. Join the uh, Discord as well, exclamation mark Discord and chat. You'll see all all sorts of tournaments going live. So if you're if you're really enjoying what you see on screen right now, yeah, I, I think that's a that's a good spot to be. Yeah. I will also take this opportunity to uh, shout out um, because this is OSAS, right? I think I want to shout out the coaching Discord for uh, all of the players playing in the amateur series and also anybody who's interested in getting better at the game please join clockwork mage love and drunk and little pog champs coaching discord server they've done a wonderful job providing an environment where you can get free uh coaching to become better at the game from all kinds of players i mean we've got quite a few very high level players in there kfc manager wallaby gangsta you know big names and i'll also very quickly uh mention my finally made a twitter account i made this during game one while achi was casting but follow me on Fem Bison, I guess, if you want to, I don't know, hopefully see me more of me doing things as I uh, continue to cast stuff. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's been, it's been loads of fun. Nice to have you on, uh, Bison, as well as we had Atsu on a little bit earlier. So if you're coming in now and you didn't catch that, it will be up on the VOD later. You might even be able to go check that out uh, right now. But, you know, don't because we have more uh, matches coming your way. And of course, they're going to be the highest quality of the night, I suspect, as we are moving into the qualifying matches for the Omega Strikers Amateur Series Invitational. If you go undefeated in the Swiss, you make it to the Invitation. I do have one update. Struggle Bus is now up to 3-0 on the day alongside Merchant Court. So big wins for them. They had an amazing showing on the first match of the day here for the Omega Strikers Amateur Series broadcast. So I'm huge on that. And remember, if your team does not make it in, if you're a fan of a particular team, they don't make it in this week. They still have one more weekly to try to get in. But on that note, Bison, I believe you and I are prepping to say our goodbyes as yes. we head off onto a break. Like I said, it's going to be just a little bit longer uh, than usual because we're waiting on some Swiss rounds and also we're going to have a caster swap. But once again, thank you guys so much for coming out. We have three, I believe, three more, uh, somewhere in the ballpark, two, three, maybe even four more matches headed your way. I'm going to tentatively say three for right now, which will all be qualifying rounds coming up after this break. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of the Omega Strikers Amateur Series.
Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Omega Strikers Amateur Series. We are on weekly number five. The Swiss to, to the Swiss matches to qualify for the finale at the end of this season. I'm Magic Eight Ball. I'm joined by the wonderful Yume. Yume, how are you doing tonight? Hey yo, I'm doing pretty good. I mean, I'm having a good time already. And this is a Philly cast over here, guys. So, yeah. These games should be pretty good, especially this first one coming up that we got, which is Yoki's Prodigies versus Struggle Bus. Struggle, Struggle Bus. Bus is a name that I'm not too familiar with. I believe I've seen their name in one of the weeklies before, but Yoki's Prodigies is obviously the favorite entering tonight. A couple of really, really good names that I see on this roster. You, you can tell me a little bit more about them. I think I saw one name that I've actually seen uh, pretty often, Jumper, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and on the other side, oh no, Jumper is teaming with Lexus. I thought it was the other oh. way around. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a, that's definitely a stack team over there. Lexus is very well known. If you guys know anything about play better, win more, you guys know of Lexus. <laughs> exactly. I, I was going to be the one to bring it up, but the, the infamous play better one more literally started by one car and he drove it into the ground so that's the okie's prodigies on the other side struggle bus i'm gonna do some scouting right quick for these names but for the most part if you're going against a team like this what is going on in your mind if you're the heavy underdog i definitely think the biggest thing is we're gonna see hopefully and this is coming from me as a Luna player. We're, we're going to see a lot of Luna because I've definitely seen both Jumper and Lexus play a, a, quite a bit of Luna. And honestly, Lexus is definitely very, very good in my honest opinion. And he's definitely made some strides back in beta. Okay. That's an interesting little, little tidbit. I'm still trying to search up these names. Unfortunately, Striker GG is not working with me unlucky there we go i believe we have one no it's still it's still just not working with me i'm going in blind with this match and it looks like we are getting right into things all right seems that we are back online thank you for interesting with us in chat there was a Luna ban as well as a Vice ban. Luna ban on the side of Struggle Bus. Yoki's Prodigy's banning Vice for Kribis, who was hovering it. And the teams are in front of you. Yuma, what do you make of this draft? Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a very interesting game. Um, I'm surprised that Luna and Vice were banned on Aimee's app when both Julie and Rasmus are kind of the king and queen of this map. I'm going to be honest. You, you sit around the middle, you are going to die. Yes, so, exactly. <laughs> like, you can try and cross underneath, but it's not going to work. Well, luckily, Struggle Bus doesn't have an Atlas, so hopefully the Atlas becomes the difference maker with his reses over here. Gonna be trying to make the difference. There is going to be a lot of difference that needs to be made up for, though, is what I am sensing. So we see the double, double kind of poke brawler composition, and on Ivy's app, very much warranted. Already getting that punch through, finding the goal barrier, Shadow PR. And a little bit stuffed by that one. A couple of nice glitch pops, and Kribis ends up finding the goal barrier themselves. There's a double team up on the top side of this round. Trying to dash forward is Lexus. Not going to be able to get that strike to go his way. One more time. We do see the Death's Touch come out. Not going to find anything, though. Both goal barriers open. Yep. This first volley. Something I want to note over here is Disrespect over here, he is very aggressively trying to find those dash punches and trying to stay in between himself and Lexus, and Lexus does find a kill over here. Wow. Like an easy score from that. I mean, easy. This is kind of the thing that I've noticed is the difference between, like, not necessarily, like, the, the rookie players, but, like, really getting to that next level is finding those picks on the goalies. Yeah, definitely, especially against the characters like Atlas or even like Kai, when the core is close to them against Julie, they are bound to just die, especially. They're going to be bound to die for this one time as well. Uh, finding that punch is Lexus. Let's send out the ultimate, make sure everybody stays nice and healthy and peachy keen. But a nice stuff 
from Lexus just needing a strike after that beautiful energy burst from Razzy sends that one right towards Shadow. Yep, something I want to note over here is that there are five prize fighters in this game, and Razzy is the only one taking Orb Ponder over here, and I think that that's... Orb Ponder is going to look pretty good, especially as the only one, so Orb Training should not be contested over here, but Razzy does find the kill. Razzy does find the kill, and a nice primary swinging down that pendulum. This jumper has been helping very much on the top side with the core control. That's going to be a nice 3-0 to start things off. Yoki's Prodigy is looking quite prodigious. Yep, and Lexus at the start. Let's see how this draft goes on. So I believe that Lexus should take 1-2 Punch here, or Stagger Swagger. Stagger Swagger does work very well. Atlas does Ooh, get cast yeah. to last, which isn't a bad option either. And Kai over here should be taking Deadeye. Yep. I'm me over here, probably looking for Super Surge Fire Up. Indeed. Rasmus gets Quick Strike, and Juliet does end up getting a Tempo Swing. I do like the idea of taking That's a Stagger Swagger. Punch. Yeah, he did leave up 1-2 Punch. I believe that he... I believe that Stagger Swagger could be better overall, but let's just see, because maybe he's not, he's confident he won't die off to the sides, because I don't think Unstoppable's back in, correct? No, no, it was not added back in. That's a Death's Touch, though, and you really would have liked Unstoppable for that. Not going to be able to get that knockback resistance as Lexus walks forward with that Fiery Flurry. Not going to be able to find one, but it's going to leave Disrespect cracked. Not very much respected. Going to be trying to find a little bit more health. It's going to get cracked right back, but Razzy... Letting that one slip a little bit too close, the gold mirror ends up down. Still a 3v2, it's gonna be scary either way, but... A little unfortunate, right? A couple of good opportunities, just not quite finding what they need to on the side of the struggle bus, because they are riding it. Yeah, definitely Struggle Bus is having a hard time finding this midfield control, especially after the Razzy let that gold barrier go, pretty accidentally, in a way. Um, but let's see how much control that Chibris starts to bring up, and he just... Disrespect also gets a kill back, so they just started turning it up over here. And does he find the goal? And Gold Barrier does block it, but oh, good attempt by Chibris. Good attempt by Kribis, indeed. Jumper does have that energy burst at the ready. Could be using it. A beautiful combination! They, was that planned? Incredible synergy from the members of Yogi's Prodigies to find that pick onto that very pesky Aimee. Gonna get that goal barrier as well, and this will look like a clean power play if they can just send this one in, but not in time. Kribis is there, is going to be able to send that one forward. Nothing too crazy happening, but a couple of nice passes through the gaps. And that's Jumper with a nice goal. Yeah, something I'm noticing here is that Yoki's prodigies are definitely really good at making up these power plays and, and trying to find these kills actually in the center. Jumper especially. I mean, he's still at three stacks of prize fighter even after he died earlier. And uh, it's going to be even more interesting because Kai right now has eight stacks of Orb Ponder. So if an Orb Training comes up, it's just a guaranteed take at this point. A guaranteed take. But what was taken from that Kai was a Goal Barrier. And <laughs> slightly sliding by was one from the Struggle Bus. Jeez, it is hard to get off of this train ride. Already we see Razzy walking forward with that energy burst at the ready. Probably with cooldowns as well. Suspect feeling low, not feeling great. Shadow PR having to burn it. And Krivis is actually having a good opportunity. Gonna force out the core flip from Razzy and the uh, and the special disrespect here is looking like he could have something. Krivis trying to dash forward, not gonna find it. I believe the cooldowns are down. This is a perfect opportunity for the members of Yoki's Prodigies. A nice stuff from Shadow PR is exactly what you want to see, and a glitch pop seals it. Yeah, it definitely feels like they found their momentum finally on the offensive here. Um, but I think that they need to improve on their defense a little bit, being able to help out their goalie and try and find proper clears, because it seems like they start crowding over in the goalie box when they start getting pressure over there. So hopefully they can keep it up, because that was a great goal. That was a great Krivis goal. Playing very aggressive over here. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Jumper finally, like you mentioned, finally going down and losing some at uh, least one prize fighter stack for the time being. That's going to be really important. Not too much craziness happening, right? But if you're a jumper in that situation, like, is there any way you could have avoided that? I don't think so, because, oh my god, they both just dash pushed each other to death! I think it was the clip from the other kill! What? <laughs> All of a sudden, everyone is going crazy! 
Ramsey has to come up with an insane save to keep the core from slowly drifting into that goal barrier one more time. And a very clutch save from Shadow PR as well. These goalies are actually playing super duper well as alongside these midfielders. Finally, that goal barrier goes down. It looks like Yoki's Prodigies can clean this one up. But a beautiful Imi's turret, a firewall, if you will, to keep that one from going in. Finally, trying to get some pressure over on the other side. Kribis is so, so scared of this Rasmus. Can't walk forward, can't do anything, and Lexus is just going to drive on in. Here comes Jumper. Corvlet oh. dice, though. Yume, this is working really well in Struggle Bus's favor. Yeah, that was such a good layering of abilities and skills just to try and make sure they could clear that properly. It just seemed so well-timed because there was nothing that just happened all at the same time. It was very stacked. And over stacked. here, Disrespect mm -hmm. and uh, Kribis finding the offensive. But, oh, what an angle to find over there. Just past the Atlas as the Julie was hovering over him. Oh. oh. We're going to go to this. You have to be feeling down. If you're going down 2-0, not going to get another carousel pick first off the bat, and that Chrono Boost is going to Kai, probably, unless it's the no, prime time. I, I definitely yeah, think yeah, prime yeah, time is yeah. going to go to Kai, and he, oh, here it is. Disrespect does take away extra special. He is worried about the Erasmus. However, I think that's something interesting Um, is that the extra special won't really matter once Erasi finds the Orb Replicator over here. And also to note, he did not take Orb Dancer. Orb Dancer was in the same draft as Prime Time, which is very unfortunate because that, those would be two extreme spikes he could pick up later on. Not going to be able to get those spikes, but that spiky, swingy thing that Rasmus carries is going to take out Kribis. That's another goal barrier, and this is looking like a really clean power play. Rasmus keeping it forward, Jumper just cleaning that one up. Look, just precise play. Such a good passing play. You you definitely see it once they once they are able to find a kill. Struggle Bus just has. A really hard time if Shadow PR by himself cannot handle two people at the same time. Right, exactly. Like you have two brawlers crowding your goal box. Like, what do you even try and do in that situation? Yeah, something that might need to change here is that I think Disrespect needs to start hovering Jumper and just stand on top of him, maybe, or even like on top of Lexus. He needs to choose an option. But it does seem they are advancing forward, and he does find the barrier. Let's find the barrier, disrespect low, but a couple of nicely timed abilities, and that one's going to send it right past Razzie, and a little bit of life getting shown from the struggle bus. Might have some music going now for that lonely ride, but hey, they take what they can get. Yeah, that was a really good corner hit too, because I've seen a lot of people in that situation, and he does unfortunately die, but oh. I've seen a lot of people in that situation, and I've seen them honestly just hit the corner by accident, because well, they're so close. Oh. Whoa, whoa. He's going crazy right now, keeping that goal barrier up during that power play. And like we said, the power play is really where Yoki's Prodigies has been absolutely tearing it up, but not this time. No, instead they're going to keep that one out of their goal barrier. Shadow PR doing some nice work. Ribis, disrespect, might have an opportunity here. A couple of flubbed abilities it looks like, but overall, like this is looking much, much better. Yeah, something I want to note here is that both teams are end up crowding on one side. And that seems like usually not the best strategy on this map, but it seems to be working because look how much pressure there is. They're just having such a hard time clearing it. Finally gets through and Jumper with a nice stall into the swing. That's going to be match point for Yoki's Prodigies to get themselves into the OSAS finale. This yeah, is going to be a really big turning point. One more goal over here and Jumper... Honestly, that was a really good goal because he waited for the full Atlas uh, primary to come out and he just hit it right after it fully came out and it couldn't challenge him on his uh, strike anymore. Ah, interesting. Right, because it stays out for just a little bit longer than that hitbox stays yeah. active. Oh, <laughs> good speed. Core flip by the... Shadow. Yeah, that was insane. Disrespect is going to try and get this one past Lexus. Not going to be able to manage it quite this time. We're going to be trading blows back and forth. Trying to look, search for the kill, not going to be able to find it. That Stagger Spire going to keep Lexus alive. Really important pick coming in. Finally, a Celestial Expansion. Going to clean that one up. And this power play is going to be relieved in due time. A couple of dribbles, trying to keep this one away from Jumper, but he's going to be able to snatch it. Finally, Lexus is back online, but is it too late? I don't think so. Firewall comes up, but it's not in time. And... This could be the turnaround that the members of Yoki's Prodigy need to clean this thing up. But Disrespect has something to say. Core flip. A beautiful save with the Alice primary. <laughs> you say, what is going on? Yo, it, that corner hit, honestly, 
nuts. And oh my god, they're still going through. And it's just going to go down. And he still finds a clear over here. And honestly, look, watching this game so far, Kribis is honestly looking like a genius if he could just execute what he wants. Because he's had really good ideas for these right clicks. And look, just, just barely off the mark every single time on almost every hit. And he does have good ideas. So hopefully this execution does go up. Right, you see the primaries coming out so often, just trying to fire those out, find something, keep the chaos online. Well, quite literally, with Aimee. Disrespect, trying to find something. Kribus was trying to sneak one in, trying to shark that one out, but not going to be able to find it. It's going to send it right back Ooh. to the Arch. Lexus happily takes home. That's Yoki's Prodigies being the first team to qualify in weekly number five for the OSAS finale, the amateur circuit. But a very good showing from the struggle bus. They're going to have to ride it one more week. That was really well played by Yoki's Prodigy. Definitely a little bit of a step above, but I want to shout out to Struggle Bus because they had some really good ideas going on into the game. Kribis, if you watch like partway through the game, he was he honestly had such really good ideas, but he just couldn't execute what he wanted to. And Shadow PR just started picking up and finding creative clears to get past the opponents. And honestly, I hope to see them again be and uh, just those slight little improvements and adjustments. Hopefully he goes crazy right after that. Yeah, hopefully he goes crazy. Because, like, that, they were so close to popping off on so many of those opportunities. Just one or two more things go right, and that's a very, very different story that we're telling in Kribis and chat. GG's, by the way. Uh, sad that they got the map again. Apparently not fans of Imi's app. And definitely not liking that they did not have that vice, which is probably one of their comfort picks. So, we're going to move on. Very good showing. Yoki's Prodigies, see you later. I'll see you in the finals. I will be there as well. And next up, I believe we have... Who do we have? Trees Fry versus Reverse Sweep. Okay. Let me find what's going on here. Reverse Sweep. Storm, Cero, Ant, Wayne. And the members of Cheese Fry Gaming, we've got Big Weepster, Dire, Cheskaku? Yeah, Ches Cheskaku, yep, that's correct. Okay, I, I just, I, <laughs> Actually, I'm very notorious for not pronouncing things correct. I think this was noted earlier, um, but I think that they signed up before Cheskaku hit a new rank, and Cheskaku's yes. actually challenger right now. Actually, high challenger. Um, High challenge. Oh, even more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen, I've seen a uh, big weepster also. There's a lot. Honestly, there's a lot of Luna players over here. Now that I'm, no, now that I'm looking at it. Really? And hopefully, yeah. It just seems like a lot of Luna players. Hopefully, I get to see a Luna game. I get to be judgmental just a little bit, you know. Just a little bit. I just, mean, we can we can get all the way. I'm I'm not gonna hold you back. Quite honestly. No, I can't. I can't. You know, th this is a tournament for improvement. If if I'm going to at least flame, I will add in sprinkles of how you can improve after the fact. It's okay. <laughs> We're all good over here, you know? Now, I fought Cheese Fry Gaming in weekly number three in the second round, and that was probably one of our harder matches. I believe we, we won that set three to one. And they had a very nice uh, Drakkar player, I believe in Dyer, on that on night market it was a very very rough game to get going eventually pulled it out but that was that was our harder game besides the the match that we won in the final so i'm i'm looking for good things here i'm looking for big things right and the kai forward okay that i am remembering this correctly this is going to be a really interesting game oh yes and this is actually a map where kai forward does function a little bit better because there's a lot more space to run around oni village mm -hmm. especially um, and it does seem like they are banning Luna, unfortunately. It seems like everyone just wants to push my hopes and dreams away. I guess someone on Reverse Sweep does play Luna. But over here, they are banning Dubu, leaving up the Atlas. I wonder what the trainings are, if they are specifically banning Dubu. But I guess Cheskaku's probably just a Dubu main. And Most over likely. there is a Vice pick. Ooh, okay. I do like where this is going. Trying to use Vice aggression Juliet. to try and punish this. Interesting. Yeah, so it's looking like this is a very high damage comp into what seems like a double midfield comp. Very low damage, but very high control. 
Um, I, I'm actually surprised because I think that there was an opportunity where uh, Cheskaku actually might have wanted to pick a ranged goalie if you're already running double ranged midfielders. Right. It does help out keep that control of the field and just basically you just never let your opponents get the core on your side of the field ever. Gonna try and keep the core away. Remember, oh, I, I right see aiming. this. Starting Awakening is Stagger Swagger and 1-2 Punch. Okay, so there's a chance, there's a chance they just never die in the first place, except to a dash punch by Thero right at the start with Pommelers. Goodness gracious, this is, uh, I thought this was going to be fine, but I have no idea how this is going to play out. I feel like we're going to be fighting all the time because we're going to have to uh, improve health from Stagger Swagger because of the 1-2 Punch on the Juliet. But Dyer is going to be doing a lot of work against that gold barrier, and so is Big Weebster. Going to send out that Firewall, try and pressure this Vice Goalie. Almost a wonderful glitch pop, but no, Sarah finding another pick. And that stun going to meave Big Weebster. Crying and look at that already getting torn down and you'd think that the double midfield would be able to keep the core away and keep themselves healthy especially with the stagger swagger online but it is not doing the work and just kaku leaving that one in the slipstream and that's gonna fly on by that vice goalie unlucky I think, really i think ant hit hit his secondary and it made it so he couldn't strike the core as it passed him unfortunately <laughs> Tough indeed. I, I, Vice Goalie, what is your opinion on Vice Goalie? Because I have my opinions. I really don't like Vice Goalie because she doesn't really have a lot to challenge. However, on maps where you can have a slightly worse goalie or if you can trust your midfielders, Vice Goalie ends up becoming incredibly strong because of how much damage there is. Like, if you look over here, Rasmus, Juliet, and Vice, that is so much damage that you can right. apply pressure with. Um, but the only problem is, is that Vice has a really hard time defending against Kai and Aimee sometimes. It's going to be multi hits, right? Exactly. It's going to be trying to to pick their way through those defenses and just dodge around these heavy hitters, which is what they seem to be able to be doing these first couple of volleys. A nice giga blast going to clear that player away. Core flips being traded. Big Weebster has one as well. Going to send up one right to Dyer, but I believe we just had five core flips on the field. It's really that triple. And Ant is going to send one goal, but not going to be able to squeak the other one by as Big Weebster set up a nice cyber swipe to clean that one through. Oh, that was, that was insane. Yeah, that, that was a really good sequence of events because using a, a core flip against another core flip just to stall for Sarah to come back in time. But Big Weepster finds such a really tight angle, and oh my god, the Giga Blast just messed up the clear, just messed up the barrier hit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. so much chaos on this map already, and it's not even, not even at the end of the first set. It seems like they're really struggling to keep these barriers alive, though, which makes sense, right, with the, the core control, but. You, you have to imagine that these players can try and keep these uh, these midfielders down on the side of Cheese Fried Gaming, right? There has to be something that they can do to make sure that they can't keep this control, to keep these players staggered. Yeah, that's definitely the hard part about this comp is that you don't really have a ton of control. And I think Storm needs to start changing his tempo to using his ultimate in order to steal the core from the enemies or even hit them away so someone else can take the core. And, but they do find the barrier over here. Mm -hmm. Ooh, big dash punch. Gonna be catching Weebster on the side. No anime for that guy. Sarah gonna find that one after a nice pendulum swing. Really nice stacked abilities on the from the members of Reverse Sweep. And they're gonna try and take this set in a reverse sweep is what it looks like. Let's see if they can do it. Yeah, it seems like... It seems like that they're just being punished because they're trying to... They're trying to hug these sidelines over here, but... And that's just close enough for one two punch and pummelers to go kill and ant is just lagging over here unfortunately hopefully someone can oh, save no. it oh no the stutters look at him slipping and sliding like michael jackson like moonwalking that's gonna be the set for cheese fry gaming not the way you want to earn it but <sighs> you have to take it where you can, can get it right hopefully ant's internet is gonna be fine as we get through this carousel Hopefully so, but we are in this draft, and Kai over here is looking to take the rapid fire. But there's a lot. Oh, here he takes build different away from Juliet. That's actually also a really good option. But Juliet does get heavy impact. I mean, does take missile prop, making her all of her stuff longer. And let's see what Vice does get. Orb Dancer, a good option. So Atlas should take peak performance for speed, and then 
Rasmus has got to duck with the leftovers. Rapid fire, fire up. Do you want more speed for your whole team when you when you hit your core flip or what? <laughs> when you hit the funny button. Yeah, when you hit the button. The anime button, as as the audio would like to call it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Still, I, I actually really like uh, the build different on the Kai. Gonna be so much harder to clear past them. Gonna be so much more damage, I think, on Barrage as well as Giga Blast, right? No, it's just it's just Giga Blast. Just Giga Blast. Okay, just well, Giga Blast, I believe. It's gonna be some big damage. Overall, though, like probably Cheese Fry Gaming winning that that draft. Oh, overall, yes, they definitely were because it seems like they took away a lot of what uh, Reverse Sweep wanted to take, but. I will say that if Reverse Sweep does find any win here, I think they do end up scaling harder late game. So let's just see if they are able to end up getting there, and hopefully it's not just a clean sweep over here, and they do pull out a Reverse Sweep. Hopefully, indeed. Working towards it right now as these gold barriers are down. Zero trying to find some punches, kicks over onto Dire. Gonna be chunking that health bar, but all in all, you have to be scared with this open goal. See how far back the players of Reverse Sweep are playing. Trying to keep this one in the closet. Nice Death's Touch. Not going to be able to find anything. Sarah's very close to a core flip. These players are having to use their flips, but these turrets are just getting in the that way. Oh, so many resources burned. Yeah, and that's definitely another big problem, because with Aimee's ultimate and Kai's barrage, everything there's just too many multi-hits to take care of. But something I wanted to highlight on there was the way Sarah was playing that, because he was dribbling, and it looked like he purposely hit it into Storm's into Storm's death touch and Storm was able to get the core and there's a quick goal by Big Weebster over there. Big Weebster. It's definitely <sighs> a very big goal. <laughs> what definitely... do you do? Like like you can't really do much, right? Like there was they were just sitting ducks at that point. Yeah, it's definitely very hard. And it's and it's back to lagging. No, this is so unfortunate. <laughs> no, cut cut the cameras, cut the cameras. Let the man live! No! Unlucky indeed. Another set finish. Due to a couple of choppy packets. Oh, okay. and this is a really interesting carousel. Oh, this is scary over here. Hopefully, Kai takes stacks on stacks. He didn't take Deadeye. That's interesting. I don't think... Well, Specialized is fine on Vice. Okay, we do take Big Fish away from Rasmus. So Rasmus here should be looking for hot shot or aerials, and he does. And over here, bulk up. And then Julie has to take prize by Zero has to find these kills and just start hunting people down. Um, something interesting that I also want to note is that I feel like Zero's percentage of using dash punch to get a barrier or a score has been very low. Now, obviously, now obviously, uh, it's really hard in the first place against double midfield, but he does get killed over there. He does get killed. A really nice trapping into the Giga Blast, and Storm's not going to be able to fend off that barrier. Ant is once again getting sent between dimensions, and that's a goal slip and sliding in. Overall, <laughs> <laughs> you see the emotes, man. <laughs> oh, and that's how these players are feeling right now. And you too could get that emote with Code Colin, I believe. <laughs> Is it is it actually just code Colin? I in believe the, in the store. Uh, the code is just Colin. Yes, the coup coupon. Colin, all, all caps. Thank you, Saya. Oh. But as you see, they're just having such a hard time keeping co just control of this core. They're always just. They just feel stuffy for them. Right. I, that's such an interesting word. Like, they there's no control of the space that they have, right? It seems like they're just getting kind of run over. Anytime they try and push it forward, they get denied. Anytime they try and clear one way, all of a sudden there's another player right in that area or another ability. That's another goal barrier down. Nothing they can do. That core flip was so strong. Atlas setting this one on fire. Not going to be able to find it quite yet, but that's a core flip having to be used as Aimee has hers. This is such a good opportunity. One more! That's match point being sent to reverse sweeps way after coming all this way. Yeah, that was also such a sick sequence of events by both teams right there, because Saro found a really good pass to Storm. If only Storm could have capitalized on that, they probably would have been able to get one of their first double barriers in this game. Um, and it could have, and just had it open instead. But we'll see what happens here. And we'll see, Ant is just barely able to catch up with this core. 
barely oh. able to catch up. No, look at the stutters. You hate to see it. Still using the abilities quite well. Still able to keep this cord this gold barrier defended, but this is the last chance that they have, and unfortunately Sarah is going down, ability goes out, and there's nothing to prevent that stuff from dire. That's a that's a draft issue, I think, unfortunately. Definitely felt like it. I think that's one of the problems with Vice, because Vice just feels like she loses to double midfield so hard, and that you have to if essentially, if you have a vice and you're against double midfield, you essentially just have to build double midfield and just try and out midfield your opponents. Especially on a big map like Oni Village, I feel like Julie just has a hard time into that double midfield unless her midfield is like really good and just finds really good passes and same with her goalie. Um, but that was just an unfortunate situation to be in. That map just seemed like it just... <laughs> that whole map and draft just felt like it was just there to counter Ant specifically and he was already getting countered by his own internet. Right, <laughs> working, working against them, and like it's so hard to just feel like you're you're useless in those matches, right? Where, where you can see how things are coming your way, and you're not responding correctly, you're not quite executing the way you need to, and then on top of that, you just have one more thing that's just completely throws your mental out with the bathwater. Unfortunate, really. Uh, I believe is. that that's going to be. We have one more game. Question mark? Can I get a mod check on one more game? <laughs> Any mod checkers? No? Just me? Wow. <laughs> Don't mind if I do boo. And Merchant Court. Looks like we're going to be getting into this game quite quickly. On the side of Don't mind if I do boo, we've got Sharks, Sharks NC, Izzy, and Dandy Penguin. Players that I've seen on the ranked ladder quite a quite a good bit, and on the side of Merchant Court, Draco Kitty, Sweeted Basher, Suited Basher, and Hythra. Here we go. Already getting into the pick bands. Yep. I just want to make a quick note because uh, we didn't technically officially congratulate them, but congratulations to Cheese Five Gaming for qualifying. They've been here for quite a while, and here we go. Imi's app and Rasmus and Juliet are both banned. Now that is going to change the map to be really interesting this time. And also in this game specifically, I actually don't know any of the names of these players. So I think that that's really cool because it's been a while and I almost see at least one player that I kind of know of, but this one, I, I actually just know no one. So I'm excited to see this one and see how it shakes out. Sharks is actually a really solid uh, Estelle player. And I'm excited to see what they can do here. We're getting into this one again, cheese fry gaming going to be sent to the OSAS finale. We've got one more team to send to that invitational. And we've got the double midfield coming through for both teams. Yeah, definitely. And it seems very interesting because honestly, both these teams have such insane control. And just look, they just have such a hard time clearing against double midfield as I mean. Having such a hard time, but gonna be able to send that one up and away for now. Couple of players getting through. That's an eject button, Naimi, by the way. I know some players have some very strong opinions about that. No strike shot for this cat girl. Looking at the awakenings as well, it was Orb Replicator Deadeye. The only one taking Orb Replicator was the Dubu on the side of Birchard Court. Which makes sense now when you think about it with the whole uh, five midfielders thing. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Something I actually want to note also, because this is probably one of the few instances we're going to see it. We see a Dubu with eject button. Wait, really? <laughs> Indeed, what? so this is going to look really fun. I'm actually I'm actually um interested to see if this Dubu does try and grab things like Chrono Boost or Super Surge just to make use of that eject button, because that would be really wild and funny. Like, like is that the entire strategy? Like, I'm, I'm, sure. I'm very confused. Oh! Okay! We go down with four hundred plus one! They just find the ace! Alright, you know what? I know nothing about this game. I, I refuse to, to make any any judgments before I see it in action. Don't knock it till you try it. And try they did. What a beautiful coordination of abilities on the side of Merchant Court, showing how they got here. This was this was hilarious. Yeah, and oh my god. <laughs> What's going on then? What is going on? I, I did, I, I, I did get some info from the TO 
Hey, it's Jack Ryan. And apparently, this is how he throws day three Dubu. Third day. Just pulling out in tournament and doing some crazy stuff like this. <laughs> That's another gold barrier gone. Good defensive plays so far from the members of Merchant Corp, but don't mind if I do boo. Is going to try and send this do boo packing with this last goal. Yep, they are trying for it. And I'm very interested uh, because it seems like that Danny Penguin does not seem. Both these players do not seem to have the best clears, and it seems. Oh my god! No! The roll! That was so unfortunate! Just putting <laughs> it right around the hitbox that would trigger. Yeah to stop oh. so something i've been noticing and um maybe this is because they're scared of the double midfield but a lot both these goalies are passing usually to the team member closest to them and the problem is is that most of the times when they pass the team member closest to them while finding these kills over here uh the problem is is that they are just passing it to an enemy that's also right in front of them usually so it ends up still being closer to their side but over here we'll see if they can stay alive just long enough izzy boy stuck over here with danny penguin does find the respawn Let's find the respawn. Couple abilities coming out, trying to clear this one away. No eject button pop back. That vice is going in, trying to find something, not gonna be able to do so. Core flip is online, is gonna be able to use it. Suited back. What a beautifully found pass from the members of Merchant Corp Draco Cat. Using that cat to its fullest potential. What a clean shot. Yeah, this has been a very, very tough game to cast so far because there's so much going on all at the same time. I think Dandy Penguin there was distracted by the orb and just was not ready to try and go for a save right after. But Oops. here we go. Over. Vice right oh. after a Vice. I'm actually surprised Vice took 1-2 punch because I don't think 1-2 punch is necessarily that great on Vice, but over here we have Izzy Boy taking Twin Drive, which is what I believe is the better option, in my opinion. And uh, over here, Dandy does steal Orb Dancer. From Haythra. So now, so okay. now Haythra must fly with his speed instead of the orbs. Gonna try and fly indeed. Using the add eject button, that long range somersault. That core that goal barrier is already down. A nice blocking of the lane as well. Firewall up, you're gonna send that one just ever so slightly in with that love tap of the turret. And this is what I really like to see from Imes who are in that forward position is they're focused on scoring, focused on putting all of their abilities in to the goal barrier. Oh, and they just get, lose the goal barrier just very slightly over here. And hey, they're doing really good options, just moving up and using the spacebar just to get more ground and just teleport back immediately over here. And here we go. Can they find the goal barrier back into a goal? Oh. Good attempt at the stun, and oh, Hathor moved up just a little bit, almost died. Almost died for it. This is going to be really, really scary position here, almost getting dunked on by that vice. Just able to keep it through, though. Oh, a nice little twist around from that vice. Just, uh, this is why I'm goalie is so hard. Yeah, it's definitely very hard to defend on Imi goalie, especially, because the other thing is, is Imi goalie is definitely a more aggressive goalie, but Hathra, she's out here going crazy, just moving even more forward than Danny Penguin is. More forward indeed, almost third forward, if you may. Izzy Boy gonna get sent to the side of the screen. You know, We all know what that means. Danny Penguin Sharks is gonna have to try and do something keep this goal out for the time being. They find the goal barrier during the power play, and here comes Vice. Aether are not going to be able to find it. Somersault's right past it. Oh, and Lucko. One more goal, a little bit of a side of life for the members of Can't Don't Mind If I Do Boo. I don't know, you may Like, do you think that they can find it? Do you think that they can keep this going? I definitely feel like they could, but they're, they're having a hard, really hard time finding any pressure over here because they're just dying over here and Hathor just keeps moving forward. She, she's just helping. She, <laughs> she's going so far forward that she's getting so much more value out of her eject button than Dandy Penguin is. And that's really surprising to see a Dubu with a eject button finding a lot of value. Right. And which is what you expect from the Imi to be kind of that third forward to be able to put on all of these aggressive plays and make them possible, especially along the side of all this core control, but just not really able to get through it consistently, I think, is the issue. 
as they are able to finally find one gold barrier and a nice little play from the Estelle. And this isn't even set. It's not over just yet. It's definitely not, because it just seems like that all a lot of these plays just feel like they're like threading the needle and finding a slight misplay from the opponent. Like very slight, because right there, Hathor was stuck in animation for the log. Mmm, okay. Yeah, just like a couple of like missed ideas, right? That's that's all it will take. As an idea gets missed here, Vice oh, not gonna be able to send that one cleanly through to the net. Not gonna be able to find it quite here. We see three members of Don't Mind If I Do Boo stacked in this goal box, just trying to cover all of the bases, trying to use their bodies as shields for this goal line. Sharks is able to come away with a little bit of core control, but here comes the missile projection projectile. I don't even know where I was going with that. Completely brain farted. Missile propulsion. Missile Let's propulsion. Go. I'm trying so hard. You know, it, I did not succeed. Sharks is over here. Play. Sharks is finding so much control now. He's, he, they're just going for it. They hope. Oh my God, that was good clear by Hathra. Oh, the Ivy turret saves it for the time being. Sharks is a little bit low, a little bit less life than they would like to see. And this turret is going to come alive once again, trying to evade, trying to clear that one. Not going to be able to find the goal is Izzy Boy. Trying to use those abilities. Hathor's just matching this Estelle perfectly, sending out the abilities at all the right times, knowing exactly how to prevent that stuffage. Corflip comes out, going to bounce right back to Sharks, and the stun does not leave the Dubu there for a long enough time. A nice play from Hathor. Once again, this goalie is going crazy. This Dubu is being the difference maker. Yeah, this is definitely a very jumbled mess, and oh, the Corflip gets stopped! This is crazy, no one can find any opportunities, but Suited Basher does finally find one in the corner hit, while Danny Penguin did not have any cooldowns to try and save that. And that was just a chaotic round. Like right there, chaotic tag. Indeed, <laughs> just, yeah. Yo, like, me, totally was. Um, pause, that's what I'm saying. And gonna be rewarded for it with probably Big Fish, maybe? No, but hear me out. I want to see Dude take Super Surger Chrono Boost Dude. over there. <laughs> yes. So she gets the longer dash, making more use of that eject button. So she goes really far because eject button also gives her more space. And this is going to be such a hilarious thing. And these drafts seem pretty good for the most part. So I mean, does deny the Estelle, the aerial specifically. Mm. Um, and heavy impact is taken by Izzy Boy. Which is, that's surprising, because I think Suited Basher was actually in front of him. And I think that Heavy Impact is pretty much best in slot and Weiss. But, you know what? Maybe I'm just wrong, because he still finds the kill with, with this big fish instead. It says, I don't need the extra cooldowns. <laughs> Sharks also feeling really, really close to the end of their lifeline here. Try and heal back up in this goal box. Not going to be able to do too much, just trying to dodge abilities during all this time. Finally going to get unstaggered. As Dandy Penguin prevents this one from hitting the goal barrier. Nice little core flip from Draco Cat. Not gonna find anything quite yet, but a beautiful Ivy Turret could be the difference. <gasps> a beautiful dunk from Izzy Boy. And that's gonna be the Cyrus Wipe to clean up the other kill. And now it's just Hythra. Hythra! She's gotta be able to do the things that she's been doing all game with Do Boo. And is going to be able to do just that. The players are back online for the side of Merchant Court. And there's still so much opportunity. The Coral Moose is going to leave her flying as she tries to defend that. And that goal barriers go down on both sides of Yume. Can, can we is, talk about how crazy this is? This is so wild. And again, Suda Pasha hits the same exact corner again. Danny Penguin is just not ready for it, unfortunately. Um, I think... This is just really intense because I think what happened there was that Sharks just tried 1v1ing the goalie and just saying, I can get a pass to Hathra. It doesn't matter. And um, and Hathra just says, nope, shutting that down. <laughs> it's <laughs> And this is such a crazy match because everything is so scrambled. Like, I can't tell what's fully going on, but this is like very exciting. And Student Basher again just finds a strike when Danny Penguin just isn't fully ready for it. It just seems like this is a problem over and over again, where Suited Basher is just free, and no one's blocking in between Draco Cat and Suited Basher. And I think that that's something that needs to happen. Either Sharks or Izzy Boy just has to start standing in between them and stop these passing plays, and instead trying to steal passes and just make their own plays right after. 
right? It seems like a fundamental misunderstanding of how how these passing plays need to play out, right? Izzy Boy just sitting on the other side of the field for the time being while Sharks was trying to clean that one out, trying to get that goal barrier down. And they're not interrupting the pass plays from the members of Merchant Court, and this could be it. Suited Basher is low, but still cooking. Aether's cooking as well. He's still not going to find the piercing shot or the core flip. And that's going to be a win for Merchant Court. And they are one last team from this event. Going to be going to the Invitational of the Omega Strikers Amateur Series. And very well deserved. They played excellent Omega Strikers today. Yeah, and as you said at the beginning, this is Haythra's day three dubu, by the way. crazy. <laughs> He is going crazy with the eject button tech, and I'm so glad, so glad she took Chrono Boost, because that was hilarious to watch, honestly. And this game was just really fun to watch. Even though it seems like it was like a blowout, a lot of these rounds went quite a long time. And that's kind of the thing that I like about watching these um, lower ranking players, is that because there's so much more like interaction and just a lot of scramble situations, it's just really, really exciting to watch. And finding people being able to find these like insane angles out of nowhere, it's just it, it's a great time. <laughs> this was a great game to watch, and I'm proud of both teams, and I hope to see this I hope to see Merchant Court again. Uh and mm -hmm. also don't mind if I dooboo, so <laughs> I actually thought don't mind if I dooboo had a hate throw. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, like I think it's a really good point. When these these kind of chaotic situations come out, when there's like two rune pillars and the core is being sent flying everywhere and there's a tofu fortress in the way and you're able to find... Like, that is when execution really shows. That's when the players who can, like, completely tear up a game really shine is because they can find these crazy angles. They can hit it off the pillar right exactly where they want it to go. And they end up creating opportunities from the chaos and it's it's a beautiful thing when it happens and that's why i think it's so exciting is because it shows off where these players shine and they did you know at you know as they like to say in like plat you know born in chaos shines one true light <laughs> and this and this was it this this was a highlight i just loved watching this because it was so hilarious to watch just overall and it just was just honestly a great game even though it didn't seem close I agree. Great game all around. GG's to everyone. Hopefully we get to see Don't Mind If I Do again in the future, as well as all the other teams from this tournament that couldn't quite make it through. Uh, I do want to, and I can't believe I'm, I'm going to shill uh, for this, but there is going to be a LAN in Philadelphia, as Yumi was referring to earlier, uh, August 19th. If you can make it, come to Philadelphia. Uh, there's links in the competitive Discord. Uh, I'm going to be running it. It's going to be a great time. And hopefully I get to see a lot of people there because I'm hoping to create an environment like what we have today where a lot of players can be excited about the game and, and show off what they can do. And if you guys are thinking about showing up, I would actually recommend you pre-register even without a team just to generate even more yes. interest because a lot of people, honestly, it, it didn't see it seemed like it was going to be a lot more of a, like a local type tournament and that would have also been cool but now there's a lot more interest because more people more and more people have been signing up so i do recommend if you guys are thinking about going even just thinking about it just pre-register because you don't have to pay until you get there honestly right exactly so that's that's all i'm gonna say all i'm gonna say uh you may anything you have for us tonight um the only thing i'm gonna note is I'm going to be there, and I'm going to be teaming with uh, my friend uh, Frightfully Fresh. So if you guys do show up, come say hi, because you're going to be saying hi to one of the best Lunas in North America and one of the best Rasmus in North America. Hey, so, yo. Hey, and Saya's going to be there. So you guys are going to meet some of the bestie in slot team. Hopefully Kuyachi shows up. You know, maybe we'll make a fundraiser and bring Brickbat over so we have the full bestie in slot team. Let's Just go. Fun. Let's go. And uh, I'm going to make another note over here. If we hit uh, 25 uh, Prime subscribers over here, guys, I'll uh, next time I come up, I will bring a uh, I'll bring my little chicken over here. Not this one that you guys see over here. I'll bring a fluffier chicken, and uh, I'll have a chicken cam for you next time. <laughs> I would I would love that. Let's get those Prime subs. You're all right. That's gonna do it from us. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to the Omega Strikers Amateur Cir Amateur Series. I've been Magic 8-Ball. This is Yume. We're signing off for tonight. Thank you. Yep. Peace out, Girl Scouts.